All right, all right. This is the Minister M.L. Kimmel. We are going to continue our study with the Book of Jubilees. We're picking up with Book of Jubilees, chapter number 31. So please, 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 uh, if you'd like to tune in with me as we go through this, we're going to continue with the scriptures that they removed. Now, why is this so important to us who claim to be followers of the Most High? because nobody can show me anywhere in scripture, any authorization where the Most High gave any permission for anybody to remove scriptures from the book. Unless you can show me that, then I cannot receive that these scriptures are not inspired. So please like, share, comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel but we're going to continue with the book of Jubilees, chapter 31. I'm going to share my screen with you guys so that you can see what I am seeing and follow along with what I am reading. Those of you that have recently joined our channel, I want to thank you for your support. We have now reached over 33,000 subscribers, and we have also uh, sub, uh, sub, uh, uh, sub, uh, uh, went past over went past over five million views on the channel, so I thank you for that as well. But I cannot get away from the foundation of why I started these platforms. I did not start the platforms to uh, always give you a laugh, or give you a joke, or talk about gossip. I started these platforms because I believe as a leader, it is absolutely ridiculous that you are trying to teach the Bible, but you won't receive the books that they took out. You're telling me that somebody who does not have any authorization from the Most High removed pieces of Scripture that was once part of the Tanakh, and you as a leader don't feel like it's important enough to learn it, know it, and teach it. Well, I'm sorry for you. I am not going to be that type of a leader. There is a reason why these books and scriptures were removed. The reason is because they want it to make you believe that it's okay to celebrate your pagan holidays. One of the biggest scams that's happening on tomorrow is the mother of pagan holidays. But you won't study it out because you're going to say, oh, can't nobody tell me not to honor my mother. You're absolutely right. But why do you got to wait to a specific day to do it? That is where it becomes a paganized scam. It goes against what the Most High requires for his people. You don't believe me, then study out the history of Mother's Day. You will find that it's going to take you back to a worship of a goddess that was connected to Baal. So you can happy Mother's Day, your scam all day long. You don't need to wait till some day to honor your mother. Not when the scripture says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be prolonged on this earth. That means you honor them every day. I just now have finally understood that. I honor my father. It's the only parent I've got left. And I cherish the relationship that I have now built with my father because I now understand what it means to honor. Honor is not just saying I love you. Honor doesn't necessarily mean you agree with everything they tell you. Honor doesn't necessarily mean that they will always make the right decision. But it does not negate the fact, you young people, that you are supposed to honor them regardless. You don't get to pick your parent, your father, or your mother. But the scripture does not say, because your father was this way, 
or your mother was that way, somehow you don't have to continue to honor. So understand the importance of that. And when you understand that, then you can understand, I don't need Mother's Day to honor my mom. I don't need no scam called Father's Day to honor my father. I'm going to honor you because you are who you are. I'm going to honor you because that's what the Bible says I'm supposed to do. So understand, I'm not trying to rain on your parade of Mother's Day. But when you tell me that it's from the Most High and you're so happy about it, think about those like myself who no longer has a mother on this earth. I have a stepmom, but my natural mother is gone. So tomorrow may not be a happy day for me. What about those that are depressed tomorrow? So don't give me, oh, it ain't about my mother. Then go honor your mother on Friday. Go honor your mother on Tuesday. Why you got to wait to a special day when there are going to be scams on every restaurant and you're going to pay triple just to honor somebody that you claim you honor? You're not honoring your mother by taking her to dinner. You're not honoring your mother by buying her some flowers. You honor your mother when you respect her all the days of her life. Now, I wasn't the best child, but I always respected my mother. I always honored her even in death. So understand that never changes. And it's the only commandment with promise. You young folks, want to wonder why all these young folks are turning up, getting murdered, getting killed? Let's take a look at how they are respecting their parents. Because if the Bible is true and you're not honoring them, maybe that's why your days are not prolonged. We got to take a look at this. Honor means I honor you whether I agree with you or not. Just like when he says, husbands, love your wives. I don't get to decide whether I love you today or tomorrow. If I call you my wife, then I have a responsibility to love you whether you pissed me off, whether I disagree with you, whether I can't even look at you today. I am still required to honor you or love you. Wives, just because he pissed you off today, just because you didn't like what he said to you today, does not give you the right to get out of the place where you are submitting to him. The scripture says, submit wives into him in everything as to the Lord. So the submitting that you are supposed to do to the Lord, you as a wife have a responsibility to do the same to your husband. You don't like it, so what? Take it up with the scripture. Now, Jubilees chapter 31, Verse one, it says, and on the new moon of the month, Jacob spoke to all the people of his house, saying, purify yourselves, change your garment, and let us arise and go up to Bethel, where I vowed a vow to him on the day when I fled from the face of Esau, my brother. Because he has been with me and brought me into this land in peace and put you away, the strange gods that are among you. And they, so it tells you right here that even at this time, those that were connected to Jacob, Israelite, they were worshiping other than the Most High, or else Jacob would not have said, put them away. And they gave up the strange gods and that which was in their ears and which was on their necks. That's that cross around your neck. That's your, 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 your scamified sign that you put around your neck. 
And the teraphim, which Rachel stole from Levine, her father, she gave wholly to Jacob. He burnt and broke them to pieces and destroyed them and hid them under an oak, which is in the land of Shechem. And he went up on the new moon of the seventh month to Bethel, and he built an altar at the place where he had slept, and he set up a pillar there, and he sent word to his father Isaac to come to him to sacrifice to his sacrifice and to his mother Rebecca. Y'all stay with me, because this is getting good to me, and it's gonna get good to y'all. We're gonna do this thing. Mm -hmm. And Isaac said, let my son Jacob come and let me see him before I die. And Jacob went to his father Isaac and to his mother Rebekah to the house of his father Abraham. And he took two of his sons with him, Levi and Judah. And he came to his father Isaac and to his mother Rebecca. And Rebecca came forth from the tower to the front of it to kiss Jacob and embrace him. For her spirit had revived when she heard, behold, Jacob, your son has come. And she kissed him. Remember, Rebecca loved Jacob, but Isaac loved Esau. Very important to know this. And Rebecca hated uh, Esau, not because of her J uh, Isaac loving him, but because Esau took on women of Canaan, which was not of their custom. And she saw his two sons and she recognized them and said unto him, are these your sons, my son? His gra their grandmother. She embraced them and kissed them, Levi and Judah. And she blessed them, her grandkids, saying, In you shall the seed of Abraham become illustrious, and you shall prove a blessing on the earth. And Jacob went into his Isaac, his father, to the chamber where he lay with his two sons with him. He took the hand of his father and stooping down, he kissed him. And Isaac clung to the neck of Jacob, his son, and wept on his neck. And the darkness left the eyes of Isaac. So here's where we see blindness being healed, being killed way before the New Testament. So don't tell me that the Most High did not heal folks. Right here, we see Isaac was blind, but for some reason, Way before this so-called Jesus come along, the darkness left his eyes. He saw the two sons of Jacob, Levi and Judah, and he said, are these your sons, my son? Now he was blind, but for some reason, he was able to see his grandchildren, for they are like you. And he said unto him that they were truly his sons. And you have truly seen that they are truly my sons. He only had two sons there, y'all. Levi and Judah. And they came near to him and he turned and kissed them and embraced them both together. And the spirit of prophecy came down into his mouth. So he began to prophesy. So anybody speaking to you, calling themselves a prophet, understand there's a spirit attached to a true prophet. If there ain't no spirit of prophecy, which means you just playing with my emotion, then you are not a true prophet. It says he took Levi by his right hand and Judah by his left. He turned to Levi first and he began to bless him first. And he said unto him, may the Elohim of all, the very Yahuwah of all the ages, bless you 
and your children throughout all ages. Let me stop right there. So Judah, stop telling me that you're the only one blessed. This is Isaac blessing Levi, his first grandson. So before there was a Judah, there was a Levi. So I got news for you Hebrew Israelites trying to sing out your own self. Get out of here. He blessed Levi too. And make Yahuwah a gift to you and to your seed. He's still talking to Levi. Greatness, great glory, and cause you and your seed from among all flesh to approach him to serve in his sanctuary as the angels of the presence and as the holy ones. This is what was blessed upon Levi from Isaac. We ain't even talking about Judah yet. Even as they shall the seed of your sons, Levi, your grand, my grandchildren, be for glory, greatness, holiness, and may he make them great unto what? All the nations, ages. And they shall be judges and princes, still talking about Levi, chiefs of all the seed of the son of Jacob. So this right here tells me Levi uh, has a little bit more power, you Hebrew Israelites wanting to just talk about Judah. Uh-uh. We got to talk about Levi too. They shall speak the word of Yahuwah in righteousness. They shall judge all his judgments in righteousness. So don't tell me, can't nobody judge me. If judgment starts in the house of Yahuwah, don't you tell me you can't judge me. The world cannot be judged. But if you claim that you are a leader or follower of the Most High Yah, then we have a right to put you up to the magnifying glass. If you can magnify me and look at me and I got to live right, you got to live right. And don't you think that can't nobody judge you. He says they shall judge all his judgments in righteousness. They shall declare my ways to Jacob. So Levi is going to tell Jacob his ways. And my paths to Israel. The blessing of Yahuwah shall be given in their mouths to bless all the seed of the beloved. Your mother has called your name Levi. And justly has she called your name. You shall be joined to Yahuwah and be the companion of all the sons of Jacob. Let his table be yours. And do you and your sons eat thereof and may your table be full unto all generations and your food fail not unto all the ages. And let all who hate you fall down before you and let all your adversaries be rooted out and perish. And blessed be he that blesses you. Wait a minute. We're still talking about Levi. And cursed be every nation that curses you. Again, still talking about Levi. We ain't talking about Judah right now. So I am confused with you Hebrew Israelites that only want to talk about Judah. And to Judah, he said, may Yahuwah give you strength and power to tread down all that hate you. A prince shall you be. You and one of your sons, one of your sons, over the sons of Jacob. Who was the prince? Y'all think about it. Who was his son he's talking about? Well, we got to know who Judah had as children. May your name and the names of your sons go forth and traverse every land and region. Then shall the other nations fear before your face. They fear Judah. That's why they put them in chains. That's why Willie Lynch came along. They fear Judah. And all the nations shall quake. And all the people shall quake. In you shall be the help of Jacob, and in you be found the salvation of Israel. 
And when you sit on the throne of honor of your righteousness, righteousness, you don't get to sit on the throne because you are part of Judah. If you live in raggedy and ain't living righteous, then he's not talking to you. You are cursed just like every other nation. He says, there shall be great peace for all the seeds of the sons of the beloved. Blessed be he that blesses you and all that hate you and afflict you and curse you shall be rooted out and destroyed from the earth and be accursed. And turning, he kissed him again and embraced him, rejoiced greatly for he had seen the sons of Jacob, his son in very truth. So the most high removed his blindness. This wasn't no Jesus that did this. This was the most high Yah. And he went forth from between his feet, fell down, bowed down to him. He blessed them, rested there with Isaac, his father, that night. They ate and drank with joy. And he made the two sons of Jacob sleep, the one on his right hand, the other on his left. And it was counted to him for righteousness. And Jacob told his father everything during the night, how Yahuwah had shown him great mercy and how he had prospered him in all of his ways and protected him from all evil. And Isaac blessed the Elohim of his father Abraham, who had not withdrawn his mercy and his righteousness from the sons of his servant Isaac. The sons of his servant, the sons of of his servant. So that means Jacob and Esau. So don't tell me Jacob and you just want to forget that Esau was blessed as, as well. If we're going to say Jacob was black, then how can a brother who has the same father and mother be white? Huh? And he went forth from between his feet and fell down and bowed down to him. And he blessed them and rested there with Isaac, his father, that night. They ate and they drank with joy. And yet Jacob told his father everything. Isaac blessed the Elohim of his father, who had not withdrawn his mercy and his righteousness from the sons of his servant Isaac. And in the morning, Jacob told his father Isaac the vow, which he vowed to Yahuwah, Jacob and the vision which he had seen, and that he had built an altar, and that everything was ready for the sacrifice to be made before Yahuwah as he had vowed, and that he had come to set him on an ass. And Isaac said unto Jacob his son, I am not able to go with you, for I am old and not able to bear the weight. Go, my son, in peace, for I'm 165 years this day. I'm no longer able to journey, set your mother on an ass and let her go with you. Reminds me of what's gonna happen in life. This is why you as a parent have a responsibility to prepare your children because you are not going to live forever. You are to be able to pass the baton to your children. How can you pass the baton if you are still trying to live like your children? And I know, my son, that you have come on my account and day, may this day be blessed on which you have seen me alive. And I also have seen you, my son. May you prosper and fulfill the vow which you have vowed, but not off your vow. For you shall be called to account as touching the vow now, therefore, make haste to perform it, and may he be pleased who has made all things to whom you have vowed the vow. And he said to Rebekah, go with Jacob, your son. Rebekah went with Jacob, her son, and Deborah with her. They came to Bethel. Jacob remembered the prayer with which his father had blessed him and his two sons, only two, Levi in Judah. And he rejoiced and blessed the Elohim of his fathers, Abraham and Isaac. And he said, now I know that I have eternal hope in my sons also before the Elohim of all. And thus it is ordained 
concerning the two, ordained again. And they recorded as eternal testimony unto them on the heavenly tablets how Isaac blessed them. So we must understand that more than Judah was blessed. Right here we see a chronological account of what happened with Isaac in his last days between Levi and Judah. And he abode that night at Bethel, and Levi dreamt that they had ordained and made him the priest of Yahuwah, him and his sons forever. That was prophecy. And he awoke from his sleep and blessed Yahuwah. And Yahru, Yah, Jacob rose early in the morning on the 14th of this month. He gave a tithe of all that he came with, both of men, cattle, both of gold, every vessel and garment. He gave tithes of all. And in those days, Rachel became pregnant with her son, Benjamin. And Jacob counted his sons from him upwards. And Levi fell to the portion of Yahuwah. And his father clothed him in the garments of the priesthood and filled his lands. So the hands. So that tells you right there, Levi was made the priest. And on the 15th month of this month, he brought to the altar 14 oxen from amongst the cattle and 28 rams, 49 sheep, seven lambs, 21 kids of the goats as an ascending smoke offering on the altar of sacrifice, well-pleasing for a sweet savor before Yahuwah. He didn't say the church. He didn't say the preacher. He said before Yahuwah. This was his offering in consequence of the vow, which he had vowed that he would give a tenth with their fruit offerings and their drink offerings. And this is where we get the tenth that somehow has scamified into these churches, in the preacher's wise fur coat, or the, the dinner you're going to after service. This tithe was given to the Most High. And when the fire had consumed it, so what he put out to tithe, the fire consumed it. He burnt incense on the fire, over the fire, that tells you this ain't got nothing to do with your money. And for a thank offering to oxen, four rams and four sheep, four he goats, two sheep of a year goat, two kids of the goats, and thus he did daily for seven days. And he and all of his sons and his men were eating with joy during the seven days, blessing and thanking Yahuwah, who had delivered him out of all his tribulation and had given him his vow. And he tied all the clean animals, so he sacrificed them. He made an ascending smoke sacrifice, but the unclean animals, the pigs, the hogs, your bacon, he gave not to Levi. He gave him all the souls of the men. And Levi discharged the priestly office at Bethel before Jacob, his father, in preference to his 10 brothers. And he was a priest there, and Jacob gave his vow. Thus he tithed again, the tithe to Yahuwah, sanctified it, and it became holy unto him. And for this reason, it is ordained on the heavenly tablets as a Torah for the tithing again, the tithe to eat before Yahuwah from year to year in the place where it is chosen that his name should dwell. And to this Torah, there is no limit of days forever. So where, where do we get not obeying this? If he said no limit of days forever, do you see why they took this out? This ordinance is written that it may be fulfilled from year to year. In eating the second tithe before Yahuwah in the place where it has been chosen and nothing shall remain over from it from this year to the year following. For in its year shall the seed be eaten to the days of the gathering of the seed of the year and the wine to the days of the wine and the oil to the days of its season. And all that is left thereof and becomes old, let it be regarded as polluted. Let it be burnt with fire for it is unclean. 
and thus let them eat it together in the sanctuary. Let them not suffer it to become old. And all the tithes of the oxen and sheep shall be holy unto Yahuwah and shall belong to his priests. This is where they get tithing to your preacher, which they will eat, but they're talking about not money here. Before him for year to year, for thus it's ordained and grade regarding the tithe on the heavenly tablets. So again, this ain't talking about your money. On the following night, on the 22nd day of the month, Jacob resolved to build that place and to surround the court with a wall and to sanctify it, make it holy forever for himself and his children after him. And Yahuwah appeared to him by night and blessed him and said, your name shall not be called Jacob, but Israel shall name your name. So this is where Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Yahuwah appeared to him directly and told him, and he said unto him again, I am Yahuwah who created the heavens and the earth. I will increase you, multiply you exceedingly, Jacob, and kings shall come forth from you. They shall judge everywhere wherefore the foot of the sons of men has trotted. So again, there is judgment everywhere for anybody that claims to follow the Most High. I will give to your seed all the earth which is under heaven. If what? They shall judge all the nations. So don't tell me, don't judge me. According to their desires. And after that, they shall get possession. After that, of the whole earth and inherit it forever. And he finished speaking with him and he went up from him and Jacob looked till he ascended into heaven. So Jacob saw Yahuwah face to face. He saw in a vision of the night and behold, an angel, here's where the angel wrestled with Jacob, descended from heaven with seven tablets in his hands. He gave them to Jacob. He read them and knew all that was written therein, which would befall him and his sons through all, throughout all ages. So you don't see this in the Bible. All you see is he wrestled with the angel. But why did he wrestle with the angel? He showed him all that was written on the tablets. He said unto him, do not build this place. Do not make it an eternal sanctuary and do not dwell here. For this is not the place. Go to the house of Abraham, your father. Dwell with Isaac, your father, until the day of the death of your father. For in Egypt, you shall die in peace. And in this land, you shall be buried with honor in the sepulcher of your fathers with Abraham and Isaac. Fear not, for as you have seen and read it, thus shall it be. And do write down everything as you have seen and read. And Jacob said, Yahuwah, how can I remember all that I have read and seen? And he said unto him, I will bring all things to your remembrance. And he wept up from him and he awoke from his sleep. He remembered everything which had he had read seen, wrote down all the words which he had read and seen. And he celebrated there yet another day, sacrificed thereon, according to all that he sacrificed on the former days and called its name addition for this day was added and the former days he called the feast. And thus it was manifested that it should be and is written on the heavenly tablets, wherefore it was revealed to him that he should celebrate it, not your Thanksgiving, not your Christmas, not your scamified 4th of July. He said, celebrate what? And add it to the seven days of the feast. Its name was called addition. So when's the last time you celebrated addition? I'll wait. I will wait. You want to talk to me about your pagan holidays? What about what he ordained? Because it was recorded amongst the days of the feast days according to the number of the days of the year. And in the night, on the 23rd of the month, Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died. They buried her beneath the city under the oak of the river. 
And he called the name of this place, the river of Deborah and the oak, the oak of the morning of Deborah. Check it out. It's still there today. And Rebecca went and returned to her house to his father, Isaac. Jacob sent by her hand, rams, sheep, he goats, that she should prepare a meal for his father, such as he desired. And he went after his mother till he came to the land of Capratin, and he dwelt there. And Rachel bore a son in the night and called his name son of my sorrow. For she suffered in giving him birth, but his father called his name Benjamin on the 11th of the eighth month and the first of the sixth week of this jubilee. And Rachel died there. She was buried in the land of Ephrathah, same Abel shed, Lechem, and Jacob built a pillar on the grave of Rachel on the road above her grave. Check it out. It's still there today. Chapter 33, and then we're going to conclude this segment. Verse 1. And Jacob went and dwelt to the south of Mount Galtraff. He went to his father Isaac, he and Leah, his woman, on the new moon of the 10th month. So he still had Leah, but his, the woman he loved, Rachel, died before Leah. So the younger died before the elder. And Reuben saw Bela, Rachel's maid, the concubine of his father. Now this is where the scam begins. The tribe of Reuben, he slept with his father's wife. That was a no-no. Look at verse two. And Reuben saw Bela, Rachel's maid, the concubine of his father, bathing in water in a secret place, and he loved her. So he was over there lusting after her. Sitting over there, and his little man was getting excited. And he hid himself at night, entered her house, and found her sleeping alone on a bed in her house. So I tell you, the drama that you see today, it's all through the Bible. They took this stuff out so they could tell you ain't no such thing as spousal rape. No, if you rape your wife, you are within, you are outside the bounds of the most high. And he lay with her and she awoke and saw. And behold, Reuben was lying with her in the bed. So that means she woke up and he was on top of her. She uncovered the border of her covering, seized him, cried out, and she discovered it was her, it was Reuben. She was ashamed because of him and released her hand from him and he fled. She cried because of this thing exceedingly and did not tell it to anyone. When Jacob returned and sought her, she said unto him, I'm not clean for you, for I have been defiled as regards to you. Your son got some unauthorized buns that I never told him he could have. For Reuben has defiled me, laid with me in the night, and I was asleep and did not discover until he uncovered my skirt and slept with me. I don't know if I believe that. So you mean to tell me this brother climbed up on top of you and you didn't discover it until you woke up? No, no. I think Bill is telling some lies here. And Jacob was exceedingly upset with Reuben because he had laid with Billah, and he had uncovered his father's skirt. Jacob did not approach her again because Reuben had defiled her. So he never got back with his wife. And as for any man who uncovers his father's skirt, his deed is wicked exceedingly, for he is an abominable before Yahuwah. So y'all lusting after your stepmom? You're wrong. It's an abomination. For this reason, it is written, ordained on the heavenly tablets that a man should not lie with his father's woman and should not uncover his father's skirt. For this is unclean. They shall surely die together. The man who lies with his father's woman and the woman also. For they had wrought uncleanliness on the earth. And there shall be nothing unclean before Elohim in the nation which he has chosen for himself as a possession. What nation? Israel. 
And again, it is written a second time, cursed be he who lies with the woman of his father, for he has uncovered his father's shame and all the holy men of Yahuwah said, so be it, so be it. I don't care what this world tells you is okay. The Most High said it's not. And do you, Moses, command the children of Israel that they observe this word? For it entails a punishment of death. He's talking to Israel. I thought Israel wasn't going to be punished. That's a scam. And it is unclean, and there's no atonement forever to atone for the man who has committed this. But he is put to death and killed and stoned with stones and rooted out of the midst of the people of our God. For to no man who does so in Israel is permitted to remain alive a single day on the earth, for he is abominable and unclean. And let them not say to Reuben has, was granted life and forgiveness after he laid with his father's concubine. And to her also, though she had a man, and her man Jacob, his father, was still alive. For until that time, there had not been revealed the ordinance in judgment in Torah in its completeness for all. But in your days, it has been revealed as a Torah of seasons and of days and an everlasting Torah for the everlasting generations. And for this Torah, there is no consumm consummation of days, no atonement for it. But they must both be rooted out in the midst of the nation on the day wherein they committed it, they shall slay them. And do you, Moses, write it down for Israel that they may observe it. Do according to these words, not commit a sin unto death. That tells me right there that you can commit sin that will bring you to death, Israel. For Yahuwah is a judge who respects not persons and accepts not gifts. So you can keep your gifts. If you're not obeying him, you will be judged. And tell them these words of the covenant that they may hear and observe and be on their guard with respect to them. Not be destroyed and rooted out of the land for an uncleanliness and an abomination and a contamination and a pollution are all those who commit it on the earth before Yahoo. And there is no greater sin than the fornication which they commit on earth. What is fornication? That is sex before marriage. If you're having sexual intercourse and you're not married, you are committing fornication. And the scripture says there is no greater sin than fornication. For Israel is a holy nation unto Yahuwah, it's Elohim, and it's a nation of inheritance and a priestly and a royal nation and for his own possession, and there shall no such uncleanliness appear in the midst of the holy nation. And in the third year of the sixth week, Jacob and all his sons went, dwelt in the house of Abraham, near Isaac his father, Rebekah his mother. And these were the names of the sons of Jacob. Firstborn, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, the sons of Leah, and the sons of Rachel. Joseph and Benjamin, the sons of Bila, Dan and Naphtali, and the sons of Zilpha, Gad and Asher, and Dinah, the daughter of Leah, the only daughter of Jacob. And they came and bowed themselves to Isaac and Rebekah. And when they saw them, they blessed Jacob and all his sons, and Isaac rejoiced exceedingly. For he saw the sons of Jacob, his younger son, and he blessed him. Listen to me. You better study to show yourself approved. These books are part of your scripture. It answers a lot that you will not get answered. I don't care if you read the 66 front backwards. I don't care if you go to your preacher. There are clues left in that book to let you know that there was a scam that went on. Namely, when it tells you in Jeremiah and 2 Samuel, that this was written in the book of Jasher. But yet you just skate past that because you don't want to accept that Jasher was taken out. You better study to show yourself approved and you better stop being scamified by somebody who don't care enough about your soul to tell you the truth. 
I am the Minister M.L. Kimball. Please like, share, comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I want you to be blessed. That's going to conclude my Bible study because now it's time for me to work. I've got a website to continue, and I've got to get it completed. And I'm going to put the finishing touches on this studio I'm working on, and then I'm going to show it to you all tomorrow. I want you guys to see this. Those of you that need a website, get a hold of me. Inbox me. Email me. I don't care. I can help you if you're trying to grow your platform. Until next time, be blessed on purpose.